A very good evening to you tuned in to UBC TV. We warmly welcome you to UBC News tonight. My name is Michael General Lukomwa and Elizabeth Nakakoni is the lady in our corner for sign language. We'll start right away with what we have for you and here we go. In a first story this evening, President uh, General Paul Kagame, I beg your pardon, President Yori Kaguta Museveni together with First Lady Mrs. Janet Museveni, and the president of Rwanda, General Paul Kagame, last evening graced a dinner in honor of the of Lieutenant General Muhozi Kainirugaba. Kainirugaba's 48th birthday celebrations took place yesterday, Sunday evening, at State House in Entebbe. On arrival at State House in Entebbe, President Paul Kagame was received by President Yuri Museveni, First Lady Janet Kataha Museveni, and the Commander Land Forces, Lieutenant General Muhozi Kainerugaba. Later, the two heads of state went for a bilateral meeting where they discussed regional security and stability in a meeting that was also attended by Security Minister Honorable Jim Muhezi, First Lady Janet Kataha Museveni, and the Commander Land Forces, Lieutenant General Muhozi Kainerugaba. At the dinner reception, it was fanfare and celebrations with great performances from traditional performers from Rwanda and Uganda. <music> President Museveni welcomed his Rwandan counterpart to Uganda and gave a brief history of their relationship with President Kagame and the people of Rwanda since the times of NRA. Your Excellency, Paul Kagame, for responding positively to Moses' invitation and coming to pay this to Uganda. Museveni congratulated General Muhoz on his 48th birthday and revealed that his birth was a gift to the freedom fighter during their early days of the struggle. Muhoz was, was a gift to us in our young days of struggle. Amidst a cheering audience, President Paul Kagame congratulated Lieutenant General Muhozi Kainerugaba for clocking 48 years and commended him for all his achievements. What is true is that the 48 years have been used very well. And therefore, there is no doubt that uh, many more years that we wish for him ahead are going to be used even better, in my view. Thank you for inviting me to be here for this uh, birthday. So I'm, I'm really here for two major reasons. One is to celebrate with your parents, with your family, and your friends. Celebrate your birthday. But the second is to also be happy that I'm here again after four or five years I hadn't been coming to Uganda. The First Lady and Minister of Education and Sports, Honorable Janet Kataham Seveni, praised and thanked God for his provision and protection for their family that has enabled them to see their son clocking 48 years while still alive. Uh, that's where I'm coming from. To say to Mhozi today at 48, that because I know that God will never leave us, because he promised, it is his promise, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. I tell you, Mhozi, that you must strive in all you do in this life. 
On his part, the main celebrant with Enanjanu Mohozika in Irugaba thanked God for giving him life this far and commended his parents for raising him and his siblings and providing for them in everything. Jenu Mohozika in Irugaba also saluted President Paul Kagame for gracing this function. I want to thank in a very special way His Excellency President Paul Kagame for honoring my invitation. Samuel Sennon, UBC News. President Yuri Kaguta Museveni has received and held a meeting with the President of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency General Paul Kagame, who has been in Uganda on a two-day private visit. This morning, President Kagame called on President Museveni at State House in Derry, during which uh, the two leaders held a courtesy private meeting before President Kagame returned home. Accompanied by the Commander Land Forces and First Son Lieutenant General Kaine Rugaba Mozi, President Kagame was received and welcomed to State House in Tebe by President Museveni, who later saw him off after the visit. President Paul Kagame was on a private visit to Uganda at the invitation of President Museveni. He later attended the dinner hosted by President Museveni and First Lady uh, Janet Museveni in honor of Lieutenant General uh, Muhozi Kaine Rugaba. was at State House and Derby. Over 30 members of parliament congregated at the Uganda Matters Catholic Church Parish, Busesa Chivale District, to support a fundraising effort for the completion of a multi-million church complex. The fundraising organized by Buyanja East MP Dr. Emily Kugonza, who was graced by Prime Minister Robin Nabanja, among other dignitaries. This fundraising effort, organized by the Wianja East Member of Parliament, Dr. Emily Kugonza, was graced by the Prime Minister Robina Nabanja, Finance Minister Matia Kasaija, State Minister for Transport Fred Biabakama, and a host of guest MPs from across the country. <laughs> Jennifer <laughs> Construction of this new multimillion church was initiated by the parishioners of Busesa. It requires a contract sum of 200 million shillings to complete within two months. Prime Minister Rubina Nabanja lauded the people of Bunyoro sub-region for supporting government's development agenda. She contributed a total of 12 million shillings towards completion of the multi-million church complex. <laughs> Come at South Ponca. 
Hizo kanti zika kwa kanga kani mali prime minister Nya wana zini zini Kutareka Mbukiaka kuka 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 yuka the Minister of Finance, Matia Kasaija, who is also a member of parliament for Buyanja County, made a personal contribution of 4 million shillings and pledged to mobilize more resources to have the church completed on time. <laughs> The guest MPs who attended the fundraising made generous contributions each. Over 100 million shillings was realized in cash after the fundraising session. The fundraising was preceded by a church service led by Monsignor John Kabianga. He thanked all those who contributed towards this fundraising effort. Monsignor Kabianga encouraged them not to live in a world of imaginary fear, but stay strong and contribute to national development. Later, the Prime Minister presided over Bugangaisi West Women Football Tournament. <laughs> She rallied the people to embrace the Parish Development Model Project initiated by government. She contributed 10 million shillings as prize money for the competing teams. Kuba <laughs> Dokas Kimono, UBC News. The Right Honorable Robin Nabanja. Uganda police has warned the public about an emerging wave of criminality targeting motorists on major highways. Police spokesperson Fred Nanga in the weekly security media brief at Naguru told the media that this comes after an attempt to harm the principal judge, Dr. Flavian Zeja, at Kalanda Z along Massacre Road. Now these are some of the metal shrapnels, the metal shrapnels and pieces of aluminium which we recovered, the, these are not bullets. Uh -huh. These are devices that are used in, a, in, a, in, in, in constructing these devices. The attacks are done by planting sophisticated improvised explosive devices along major highways. Police have told journalists that over the weekend, the principal judge, Dr. Flavian Zaidia, survived an attack at Kalanda Zibuama along Masaka Kampa Road. The assessment of the scene was conducted. Uh, where it was uh, established that the attack was a result of devices planted under the road guard rail. 
At first, judicially released a statement indicating the principal judge was attacked by gunmen, which police has clarified after seen examination. On their way, gunmen opened fire on their convoy. Uh, they first targeted to hit the tires, but they didn't get them, and uh, he now started shooting randomly. We thank God that uh, the vehicles were able to go through. It was not by uh, armed gunmen, but it was more from a roadside improvised explosive device. The police also recovered remnants of the explosive and established its impact on the environment. The explosive device was actually buried, and uh, so the persons, the perpetrators, had a remote. And uh, so when the when the vehicle arrived at that stage, uh, they detonated the, uh, the 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 IED, and then it went off. You can see how it damaged the guardrails. This is another photograph of the damage to the guardrail. This is another picture which shows how it dug, how it dug below the, the guardrail. Criminal investigations have confirmed as these kinds of attacks are becoming a threat. And on 17th of this month, the similar incident happened at Changoma, Rengo district, where an improvised explosive device exploded, hurting Busasira Alex while driving to Kampala. Uh, in Luengo district, that is along the Masaka Chinoni section, they were hit uh, by an explosion which was detonated and the shrapnels uh, pockmarked their vehicles. No one has so far been implicated. Abdul Nasser Lubwama, UBC News. Ministry of Internal Affairs is stuck with over 10,000 processed passports that are pending for collection at Chambogo Control Center. The ministry spokesperson Simon Mundei says that the bulk of the unpicked passports affects limited space in their offices. The long process one undertakes to process a passport and the long lines at the Ministry of Internal Affairs not withstanding, people are reluctant to pick processed passports. The Ministry of Internal Affairs is stuck with 10,000 uncollected passports. They are there, a person applied for a passport, even paid, came and queued up, and the passport came out, but the person is not willing to go and... Uh, the, passport. the spokesperson, Simon Mudei, reminds the public against fraudsters in the passport acquisition process. To try to nab some of this, we have indeed nabbed some of them and are already in, in prison as we talk. In another development, Uganda prisons have distanced from the fundraising for the Muslim prisoners in the month of Ramadan. So please, don't, don't, don't contribute to this. These are con men. They are just taking the advantage of the season to con you. I went ahead and put a press brief, but I made a press release, but I hope, I am not sure whether all of us saw it. So please, these are just fraud stars. Bain has also clarified on the ongoing circulating allegations of the prisoners' mistreatment. The avenues of confirmation are there. There is nobody, there is nothing that will happen in the prison that we keep quiet. We always come out and tell the public what happened and how it happened. So, but this, this fictitious uh, and malicious communications tend to affect our service delivery. Uganda prisons have cautioned the politicians against misinforming the public about the ongoing project of pre-bargaining, intending to decongest prisons. This project is being piloted by the judiciary in different prison centers. Lydia Chomkama, UBC News. Health workers under their Allied Health Professionals umbrella have given government a 20 day, 21 days ultimatum starting April 25th. Uh, Starting today, that is April 25th, they threatened to lay down their tools if their salaries are not increased as agreed in 2017.
Allied health professionals have threatened to lay down tolls and seeking salary increment and want taxes levied on their emoluments scrapped. The collective bargaining agreement signed between government and health workers in 2017 indicates that government pledged to enhance salaries of allied health professionals to 3 million shillings. Salaries for all health workers must remain consistent with what was stated in the collective bargaining agreement of 2017. And in this agreement, as earlier on stated, diploma holders in U5 scale were to be paid 3 million shillings. And we stick by that. Short of that, we are going to withdraw our services as allied health professionals in Uganda. And as we speak here, our professionals are on a high gear to lay down their tools. So we ask government and different stakeholders involved in here to take this matter so serious. But health professionals still claim that the taxes levied on their salaries should be scrapped to enable them have a take-home package. Taxes are pinching and the greatest portion of money is paid to health workers is taken by these taxes. So we also demand that they reduce the taxes from 30% to 10% such that the health workers are able to be able to take care of their needs. As we speak, the housings, accommodation for health workers is not sufficient. The same salary you paid is what you use for accommodation. There is health, you know, taking care of yourselves, school fees. This leaves the health workers demotivated and not able to deliver at, at work. Allied health professionals include sectors like dental hygienists, diagnostic medical sinographers, physical therapists, radiographers, and cover 25% of the total population of health workers in the country. So, because of what we do, you realize that the health workers in the health setups work like a chain. And without us, there will be no health services that we boost over in this country. Mary Namkose, UBC News. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions has decried challenges they face during execu execution of their duties, which hinders delivery of timely justice. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Jen Francis Abodo, cites understaffing, limited security, and little pay. This was during the National Symposium of Prosecutors at the Imperial Royal Hotel in Kampala as one of the events characterizing the John Kagezi Memorial Week. Over 300 prosecutors are undergoing a symposium to discuss issues affecting their work, including current crime trends and challenges. The three-day symposium was officiated by the Acting Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs, Wilson Muruli Mukasa. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Jane Francis Abodo, said the symposium links prosecutors across the country. The symposium is a symposium to bring together prosecutors, from all over the country to get together and, and discuss issues which are touching us in terms of what are the new laws that have come up, what are the new challenges that we are facing. But uh, it also brings us to discuss a number of things, like what are really the issues that are touching prosecutors. She appealed to government to address the challenges they face that hinder timely justice delivery and limited security. Some three years ago, uh, government had made a commitment to enhance the salaries of prosecutors. But uh, up to now, we are still waiting. Of course, COVID-19 came in, but we are hopeful that the salary of prosecutors is going to be enhanced. We are grossly understaffed. We are 323 prosecutors, as against an approved structure of 862. The threat on the prosecutor's life is really, is, 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 is real. We are no longer talking about that it might happen. We are saying it happened in 2015 and it can happen again. There is nothing that can stop it from happening again. The Acting Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs, Muruli Mukasa, promised that government will address the challenges. Really, according to the NDP3, uh, which we have, uh, this is very important and government is committed to making sure that these challenges are met in the long run. Uh, those that can be met immediately, they will be met. Like, let's say, recruitment, for instance, of additional manpower, 
That, I think, is going to happen in the next financial year. And then uh, a little bit of um, uh, in, in, increasing pay, that, I think, will also be going to be handled. Uh, but then the others, they need a little bit of uh, uh, extensive planning and adequate preparations for the necessary funds and so on. So these can be sorted out in the short run. When he asked about the recent attacks on the principal judge, Dr. Flavian Zaidia, the minister responded. That unfortunate incident about the principal judge, we feared initially that he had actually been shot at. However, the report from the Ministry of Internal Affairs says no, there was no shooting. Uh, somebody threw something like a helmet or something at the car, and then there was uh, some explosion. So fortunately, uh, that did not do any harm really to the judge. So it's quite uh, calming that uh, nothing more serious happened. The Joan Kagez Memorial Week is characterized of two events including the National Symposium of Prosecutors, held under the theme Human and Wildlife Security for a Sustainable Development, and the Joan Kagez Memorial Lecture, slated for the 26th of April 2022. Ivan Juko, Rebecca Nantongo, UBC News. Can we please have the memory? The Assistant Commissioner Malaria Control Program in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Jimmy Opigo, has called for individual responsibility to end malaria prevalence. He advised for integration of malaria vaccination in the routine immunization program. Malaria is a leading cause of deaths in Uganda and kills 478 people over every, uh, over every 1,000 daily. It is transmitted by the female Anopheles mosquitoes. Uganda has reduced the prevalence rate to over 70% in the last 10 years, and government has put new measures to eradicate malaria. Three types of uh, mosquito nets. One is the PBO, which is a catalyst or a synergist. It makes the uh, we, we bypass the, re, uh, the resistance mechanism. In the others, we have introduced a second chemical called clofinipa, so that if it is resistant to this, the other one kills. And then we have reduced also insecticide growth regulator, which suppresses egg formation from resistant mosquitoes. Through the Global Alliance for Vaccine and Immunization, Gavi, government will receive malaria vaccines and plans to integrate malaria vaccination in the routine immunization program. Children from five months to five years only. Uh, the others <laughs> will have to depend on existing methods because the vaccine is not enough. Government is working on the gene drive project at the Uganda Virus Research Center and hopes to incorporate it in the various measures. Dr. Opigo has urged the public to continue to play their role in malaria prevention, especially during this rainy season. Gene drive is also a genetic modification strategy which aims at one, sex bias. It will mostly make male mosquitoes, and male mosquitoes cannot transmit uh, mal uh, malaria. It is the female Anopheles mosquitoes. Also, the other thing it is going to introduce is they will be less able to transmit the genes inside, which makes the maturation of the malaria parasite doesn't work. But this one Malaria affects at least 300,000 people daily and can be prevented by use of mosquito nets, clearing stagnant water around homes, among other preventive measures. Miriam Umcha, UBC News. A basic informal skills training program called NEM Do It For Yourself chair quality has been launched at Wakiso district headquarters. The program, which does not require any formal entry requirements, will be jointly implemented by the Eastern and South African Capacity Building Center, Nakawa Vocational Training College, Denovit Associates, and Uganda Broadcasting Corporation. 
Haiti financial pressure suffered by public institutions due to the COVID-19 pandemic and climate change raises innovative cost reduction in public sector spending. Dr. Constantine Bitwaiki, the program's principal development consultant, says that the program, in line with the National Development Plan 3, the Do It Yourself, Che Kodere, informal skills training program, has been launched at Wakiso District with the 90% basic hands-on informal skills training in electricity and solar maintenance, welding, woodwork, building, plumbing, and motor vehicle maintenance. We're encouraging public sector institutions to reduce costs by getting basic skills which can enable to do some of the things themselves. That's why we are, calling, we are coming with a slogan called Che Kore. The Wakiso District Vice Chairperson, Bettina Nantege, welcomed the project and urged the technical staff to embrace it. In Wakiso District, we embrace it because, first of all, uh, we learn new skills. We can be able to save funds because uh, it is an easy way out. Namayumba Town Council Town Clerk, James Sewan Kambo described the program as long overdue since it's already being implemented in some development countries. It is a requirement which would have come actually like yesterday. You know, if you go to the developing economy, if you, if you look at the developing economies, really we still have a challenge of, of not believing in ourselves, of not wanting to get other extra skills of how can we, you know, how can we make some few things in, you know, in our homes better. Mutony Hilda and Juko Collins, UBC. Yes, from Wakiso, we'll take a short break. Thank you so much for watching. Do not miss what we have on return. Today in history. On 25th April 1991, a record crowd attended the burial of Prince Badiluka Kongulu at Chibuli Hill. Prince Badiluka Kongulu died on 24th April 1991 at Chibuli Muslim Nursing Home at the age of 84. President Museveni was one of the thousands who paid their last respect to the prince. President Museveni described Kakongulu as a wise man and a freedom fighter in his speech. Pay for your dream phone, Mpola Mpola. Get your dream phone today for as low as 1,400 Uganda shillings with free data for a year and pay slowly, slowly. All phones come with daily 50 MBs for 12 months. Repayment period is one year. Available at MTN service centers and M Copper shops. Great entertainment tea. Sports. The local board in tea. Telovela. The movies. There is something for everybody. Everybody. Go TV. This is where our best stories live. Get the best entertainment for any budget. With Go TV, you will have great entertainment for as little as 13,000 Uganda shillings per month. Go TV. Great stories. Zidiwano. Go TV Uganda. Love it. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months at only 250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings, making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only. Airtel, the smartphone phone network it's no secret that ICT makes learning easy the strides made in our field could not be possible without it and now we can watch our favorite show yeah. ah my radio is my best friend UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission.
Even with my grandson, a doctor at my side, I struggled to get the help I needed. But he saw something that day. He began to work day and night. He wouldn't quit, even when people said no. He wouldn't stop fighting. He knew something had to change, and his vision was bigger than anyone could imagine. He made it possible to receive quality medical services anywhere in Uganda by simply using a phone. This is a story of a regular Ugandan just like you, who harnessed the power of technology to provide a solution for us. How about you tell us your story? Yuji needs more of you. To share your story, visit airtel.co.ug slash Yuji needs more of you or call or SMS 162. Airtel, the smartphone network. Welcome back from the break. It's UBC News Tonight. Let's now talk business. Effects of COVID-19 remain persistent and still crippling many businesses to take off, despite government efforts to save many from collapsing with bailouts. The city abattoir is among those still worse hit and whose predicament to steadily survive in the post-COVID-19 era hangs in a balance with strain cattle diseases such as East Coast fever, Babesiosis and anaplasmosis, identified as major tick borne diseases affecting livestock productivity industry in Uganda. Just like any other business that was hit by the COVID 19 pandemic during the past two years, the city abattoir, located on Old Port Bell Road, was no exception. So the workspaces had individuals working in them. Uh, most of the butchers that were taking the meat from the abattoir in the metropolitan area of Kampala used to take more meat than what they consume right now. Uh, in that their intake decreased after the pandemic. <laughs> The city abattoir, well known for meat, butchers are still reporting low sales as the economy struggles to recover from the effects of COVID-19. Uganda suffers an aggregated annual loss, both direct and indirect, of over 1.1 billion US dollars in the ticks and tick bone diseases complex. East Coast fever caused by a protozoan hemoparasite, Theoleria pava, is the most prevalent and economically important tick bone disease in Uganda. The brown ear tick is widely distributed. These diseases continue to affect the abattoir business in the post COVID 19 era. The situation has affected the times when high sales are supposed to be harnessed. It has caused low sales over the last two years of COVID-19 with low turn-up of customers registered when government suspended animal markets to counter the spread of the TTBDs. We used to slaughter an average of 300 to 400 cows. Uh, people used to sell their cows to us from the different farms. Uh, people used to purchase a lot of meat because most people still had their jobs. Uh, we have a number of districts where we pick cows from, but uh, due to the health regulations such as quarantines, there are some areas they quarantine where we can't uh, receive animals from those areas until the quarantine has been lifted. The restrictions on movement due to COVID-19 and the animal quarantine also affected the abattoir business with a lower turn-up of livestock to slaughter chambers. This attracted high prices for animals. The most affected section of the city abattoir is the gold section, which only received 200 goats during the Easter season, as opposed to 2018, when 400 to 500 goats will be butchered on a single day. 
Now, right now, after the pandemic, the numbers went as low as 200 daily. So we tend to slaughter very little cows due to the less and less demand for the products. And uh, most of the working spaces, people lost capital and they pulled out of the business. Most of the traders uh, no longer have capital to purchase more cows as they did before the pandemic. Traders at the city Abato also attribute the poor performance of the Abato sector in the post-COVID-19 era to the limited functionality of animal markets, since many headsmen no longer deliver animals for trade-offs during to restrictions imposed by government on transportation of animals from TTBD's affected areas. Traders at the Abatra have registered entry of only 800 compared to the over 1,000 they usually have for the seasons before the pandemic. They are also selling their meat at 9,000 to 12,000 shillings, depending on the quality of meat. Before the COVID-19 lockdown, the abattoir used to slaughter in excess of 300 cattle and all meat was bought. Schools Hotels, restaurants and institutions were the big customers of the abattoir. With most of these closed under the lockdown, the abattoir suffered financial setbacks. Currently, 80 cattle are slaughtered and it is a struggle to find buyers. So the traders got what we call the bad debts. Uh, they get loans from microfinances. Uh, microfinances later on take their properties. Uh, they take their business uh, in that they can no longer work with the limited capital they have. So, For each cattle slaughtered, a trader earns 15,000 shillings. The money is divided to cater for operational costs. Despite the hurdles at play, what is the strategic approach for recovery? So on the side of uh, different workspaces such as kiosks, uh, such as restaurants, uh, those ones they provide uh, services to the traders and we also reduced on their rent payable to the management in that we have uh, opened up a, a circle for the traders so that they can engage in saving so that they can get that saving culture and they can come together as a cooperative so that they can be helped and they can develop themselves. Beef is the main cash cow at the abattoir, but goats and chicken are a source of income too. With dwindling number of animals slaughtered, prices have been affected too. A kilogram of beef costs 10,000 Uganda shillings, up from 7,000 shillings, while a kilogram of goat meat costs between 16,000 shillings and 19,000, up from 12,000 shillings. Sandra Kahonde, Joel Vobia, UBC News. Farmers need to start commercial farming if they are to get out of poverty. They also need to utilize the rainy season and plant quick maturing crops, although the outbreak of army worms has affected maize gardens. <laughs> Commercial farming for poverty alleviation and fighting hunger is recommended by agriculturalists following the lockdown that affected the sector. Farmers need to involve in commercial farming, plant quick maturing crops, although maize gardens have been attacked by army worms. State Minister for Higher Education, Dr. John Chrysostom Moyingo, assured farmers that scientists and researchers in the agricultural sector will find a solution. This was contained in the minister's speech, read to him by his personal assistant in Bamunanika, Abdul Karim Waswa. He was handing over three tons of maize seedlings to the farmers in Kamira sub-county, Luweru district. The function coincided with the celebrations of over 140 students who completed diplomas and degrees at various universities under the Munanika Constituency Education Fund program in Kamira sub-county. Communities and farmers commended Dr. Moyengo for improving the education sector where, in 10 years, Kamira, which had four graduates, 
currently has over 200 graduates. I'm Navka Farida and Salon Kasband. UBC News Tonight, we now go international. The late uh, former president, Mwai Kibaki, his body is lying in state in the Kenyan parliament. The former head of state will lie in state for the next three days. Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, and deputy William Ruto were among the first government officials to arrive at parliament this morning for the body viewing. Kibaki, who died Friday last week, will be laid to rest on Saturday this week. Peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, give your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Almighty God. Need to send money to a loved one but you don't have enough on your phone? Have you run out of fuel but you don't have enough money? Do you want to pay for yaka or water but have insufficient funds? Or do you want to shop but you don't have enough money? Don't worry. Get away with MTN Momo Advance. Momo Advance tops up your Momo to complete your transactions. Dial star 165 star 5 star 3 hash to apply. MTN Momo Advance is always available when you need it. A World Cup in the desert? The first one in the Middle East. The first to be held at the end of the year? That's crazy. Get ready for spectacular moves. High flying saves. Unbelievable goals. Out of this world celebration. Would you believe it? What a moment here! All 64 matches live. That's over 5,000 action packed minutes of the FIFA 2022 World Cup Qatar. Now that's crazy. Catch all the action only on Supersport, your world of champions. On Gold TV. Love it. Choose our with Airtel Money Quick Loans. Get a top-up loan when you have insufficient funds to buy airtime, pay utility bills, or make payments at a local supermarket. Complete your transaction and pay later. Dial star 185 star 7 star 10 hash to opt in. Get an Airtel Money Quick Loan and pay later. Choose our with Airtel Money Quick Loans in partnership with Housing Finance Bank and powered by Yabex. Airtel, the smartphone network. COVID-19 is still here with us. As Owechtiwa Peter Maiga, the Prime Minister of Buganda states, let us all take the necessary precautions. Self-medication is always very dangerous. We should leave medical matters to the medical personnel. It's only a healthy population that can produce wealth. And if you want to work for your well-being, you must care about your health first. Because of the new COVID-19 circulating variants like Omicron, it is very important for all of us to be fully vaccinated with two doses of the same vaccine type. It's only those getting Johnson & Johnson who receive only a single dose to be fully protected. Even after vaccination, continue to adhere to all SOPs by wearing a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose, washing your hands regularly with soap and clean water, or using an alcohol-based sanitizer, maintaining physical distance of at least two meters from others, and avoiding crowds. Echa COVID-19, chijakugwa. 
This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and partners. UBC Sports News tonight. Visiting Federation of International Gymnastics President Monari Watanabe is impressed by Uganda's progress and has promised to work with Uganda to improve quality of the sport. Gymnastic sports in Uganda may be relatively new in the ears and eyes of many Ugandans, but yet has been around for a while now. The sport has in fact gained so much prominence that has now witnessed the visit of Federation of International Gymnastics, Monari Watanabe. They are showing uh, very fantastic gymnastics. This is uh, new gymnastics. They create it. Uh, so far, we we don't, didn't have a, like that uh, gymnastics. You know, maybe it's, uh, what is different from uh, past gymnastics is they are enjoying gymnastics. The international gymnastics president lauded Uganda for its milestones and promised a lasting collaboration that must involve government to better the sport. Of course, we will teach gymnastics for the. Uh, Uganda, but also we will study from Uganda spirit because uh, there everybody enjoy. This is uh, what now we uh, forget in the sports. People like that uh, children is together and uh, enjoy and show for the friendship and solidarity. This is a sport. I'm very happy to come here. During his visit, the International Gymnastics President was hosted by both National Council of Sports and Uganda Olympic Committee. When you start with us, so the donations, ones who have been notified on time, would be able to provide funds and clear them from the URA. And it's a very good testament that he has chosen to come and visit Uganda, and we believe his visit will help us uh, continue to collaborate and see how we can strengthen gymnastics, which is a very important foundational sport, and we look forward to his visit translating into greater things for the association through potential support for training of the athletes, the officials, the coaches, and the facilities. The international gymnastics president are promised to support two Uganda gymnasts at the World Championships later this year and offer the Gymnastics Association of Uganda president vowed to utilize to its utmost. He has been, to been able to identify that we need equipment so badly. He has been able to identify that we need all the support we need in terms of facility to boost our growth. And he has committed to make sure that he supports us. So the future, I am not worried at all. He concludes his visit on Tuesday. John Burns, Sentam, reporting. Uganda has triumphed the seven rugby champions of Africa, despite Ugandans being unmatched uh, with the victory. Amon Gabo has the report in detail. When one talks of home advantage in sports, it goes beyond the ground that hosts in a sports event. In football, Nambole has always been a fortress for the national football team, the Cranes, and indeed it took quite some time for Cranes to lose on its own grounds. Uganda won the Africa Men's 7 Rugby Tournament over the weekend, but as we go on to hail the nature of play, the resilience of players, one can never undermine the role of fans. Indeed, on Saturday and Sunday, fans came out in big numbers, not only to cheer the game, but equally to have fun as well. Now, that's the beauty of sports. As you enjoy the game, you are supporting your favorite team. On a Sunday morning, the heavy morning downpour did not stop fans from filling up Chaduno rugby grounds to witness Team Uganda triumph against Africa. Though the games paused for a while, the fans kept on coming in. The gates were filled up with rugby fans, many dressed in national colors, ready to cheer up the national team. The rugby cranes easily cruised through the stages to the finals unbeaten and was to face Zimbabwe in the cup final. 
28-0, the scoreboard read in favor of Uganda. At the end of the final, and the horse were crowned African champions. As Alia announced, it was then time for enjoyment. As sponsors now special had organized a star-studded list of performers. UBC TV hails the fans for the role they played to see the team regain its glory at the continent. The 14th edition of the CDF Soccer Cup has kicked off at Buhinga Stadium for Porto City. 19 football teams drawn from division brigades and six netball teams started with a route match led by Colonel Winston Mugarura. Major General Kayanja Mohanga, who represented the CDF as the guest of honor, said that the Soccer Cup is meant to build teamwork, bring forces close to the people, strengthen ties, enhance leadership, discipline and sportsmanship. Sports also makes a vital contribution in the defense forces towards fighting, towards fighting, towards fighting spirit, morale, personality, personality development and ultimately operational effectiveness. Sports produces soldiers who build and lead teams by habit and reflex. It generates and maintains cohesion. It allow us to appreciate the role of UPDF in pacifying this country as a people's army. No doubt we interact with UPDF at various forums as our own. We don't fear each other. We engage, each, we engage each other constructively, and this is what it means to have a people's army, but also a professional army. <laughs> we thank you so much for watching. That is all we had for you at this point. We'll get back with another arrangement. Keep it UBC TV. My name is Michael Jordan Lukomwa with Elizabeth Nakakone and the whole team. Wish you all the best. Keep it with us.